want, Sam. We'll be late. Sweetheart, the Tower of London has been standing there since the year 1000. I promise you it won't go away. If that's Larry, uh, tell him I was lost at sea. You think it could be him? He knows we're on vacation. He knows, but he doesn't care. <laughs> Mother. I'll get on the extension. Are the children behaving themselves? Oh, they're perfect little darlings. As a matter of fact, they're right here. And they want to say hello. Say hello, Mommy. Come on. Hello, Mom. Yes, say hello, Daddy. Hello, Dad. Uh, hello, Adam. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? Are you having a good time with Grandmama? Oh, yeah. This morning, we all went swimming in the pool. Pool? What pool? We don't have a pool. Grandmama packed it up. What? Uh, put Grandmama back on the phone. What is it, Dadwood? Andorra, didn't you promise on what you laughingly call your honor not to pull any of that hocus pocus in front of the kids? Oh, don't get your giblets in an uproar. I removed the pool when the children were through swimming. Darren. It is not necessary to thrash this out on a long-distance phone call. Oh, don't worry. This call isn't costing you anything. Why not? Because I'm using Tabitha's phone. <laughs> now, don't you realize what a poor example you're setting for the children? Now, why couldn't you use the regular phone? Because there's one thing it can't do. What is that? This. <laughs> <laughs> Dora, Dora. Did he get the idea, Samantha? Yes, Mother. He got it. And now I think I'm going to get it. Bye. How did a nice little witch like Samantha get mixed up with a big, bad wolf like Henry VIII? It all started in the Tower of London, when Samantha got carried away by the plight of a warlock named Herbie. I don't know if your powers are strong enough to, to release me, but I beg of you, please try. It seems to me you've served your sentence. And that is where Samantha made her big mistake. Sam, what? Where did he come from? Darren blew his top, but that wasn't the topper. This was the topper. Who gave you the right to reverse my curse? Nobody. And I apologize. Apology not accepted. Now put him back where he belongs. Okay, okay. Now. I'll show you what we do with meddlers. Oh, Malvina. This trip through time will teach you a lesson in others' affairs not to mess in. Back to Henry VIII go you. The moment you meet him is the moment you'll rue. And that's how Samantha got carried away to the court of Henry VIII. One morning, just as the sun was rising, I heard a maiden singing in the vale below. Oh, don't deceive me. Oh, never leave me. How could you use a poor maiden so? And Dora explained that in order to get Samantha back from the 16th century, Darren would have to go back to that time, find Samantha, and win her with a kiss. Place this talisman around your neck. When you need me, put it between your teeth and flap your arms like this. <laughs> and do this. Quack, 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 quack. You're kidding. <laughs> As Darren started in pursuit of Samantha, His Majesty Henry VIII was engaged in exactly the same activity. We are the champion wrestler of the British Isles. Well, uh, th then shouldn't we pick on someone our own size? <laughs> we shall make you a lady in waiting. 
And just between you and me, you won't have to do much waiting. Oh. 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 Tabitha and Adam. This is a view of Loch Ness. It's a large lake fed by the River Ness. Loch is the Scottish word for lake. I knew that. You did not. <laughs> this is the home of the famous Loch Ness monster, but more about him later. The lake is near a town called Inverness, which is in Scotland. We're here visiting a cousin of your daddy's. His name is Robbie, and he owns a small hotel. That's where we're staying. Uh oh, uh, that's all for now. Love from us both. <laughs> ah, some of me that cannot eat, uh, and some would eat that want it, but we have meat and we can eat and say the Lord be thank it. Time to feed the inner man, eh? The inner woman is starving, too. <laughs> you got a bonny wee witch there, Cousin Darren, how you know? Close enough, Cousin Robbie. Hey, the salmon looks delicious. Very expensive, too, I might add. If I was charging you for that, you'd be paying a pretty penny for it, you can be sure. Business has been very, very bad. Why is that? Well, you've no doubt heard of the Loch Ness Monster. It's the only tourist attraction we have around here, and he's been a wee bit shy these past few years. With no monster. Loch Ness is just another look. Ravi, has it ever occurred to you that the reason he's been shy is that there is no Loch Ness monster? Nay, monster? It's that kind of propaganda that keeps the tourists away, laddie. You know, the fact is, I've seen the beastie with my very own eyes, and fearfully is, too. <laughs> of yourself. I don't know where Serena is. Now get lost. <laughs> the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Greatest architectural goof of all time. If you do this, everything else looks like it's leaning. Oh, that's probably Larry. He's supposed to be coming over with the client. Hello. Hello. Okay. What's ringing? <laughs> This. Hello? Hello, Samantha. How are you? Fine. How are you? Miserable. <laughs> What's the matter? I can't talk about it in front of him. Darren, would you mind? Couldn't she use the phone? I am using the phone. <laughs> Uh, now, what is it? Hi, Mommy. Aunt Agatha's here. She is? What for? That's why I called you. I just can't babysit for you anymore. So I've gotten Agatha to take my place. What is it? What's wrong? Well... Oh! Oh, oh hello! 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 Oh, dear. 
I must have broken the connection. Hello? I don't suppose it would occur to you to use the phone? <laughs> Telephone upon the table. Just as soon as you are able, send my voice to Sam and Pisa in the land once ruled by Caesar. <gasps> and take it back as my mother pulled another girl. <laughs> They're ringing. Hello, Samantha. Oh, uh, hello, Esmeralda. Now, look, I really don't want you to leave. Uh, Sam. Well, I don't. Uh, Sam. <laughs> oh. oh, my stars. Esmeralda, you shouldn't have come here. What makes you think I wanted to? I just meant to send my voice, not all of me. <laughs> Esmeralda, will you tell us what's wrong? I don't want to talk about it. But as far as the vase is concerned, I want you to know I intend to replace it. What vase? The one your mother gave you for your anniversary. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, dear. Esmeralda! Uh, now, now, stop that. The truth is, Darren never really did like that vase. He didn't. Uh, no, I hated it. I'm glad. How did it get broken? There was water from the flowers in it, and I used it to put out the living room curtain, and it just slipped out of my hand. Put out the curtain? It was on fire? No. It was just smoking a little bit from where the dinosaur had scorched it. Uh, dinosaur? Esmeralda, how did a dinosaur get into our living room and I know I'm going to be sorry I asked? Well, you know Tabitha's little friend Diana from down the street? Mm-hmm. Tabitha was teasing her and I told her she was making Diana sore. And that's how it happened. <laughs> Dinosaur. Oh. Dinosaur. Uh. Mm -hmm. And here, ladies and gentlemen, is the famous Carapeggio Venus, also known as Aphrodite, also known as Big, big troublemaker. Ah, Venus. The goddess of love, the high priestess of a hanky-panky. <laughs> and now, a special treat for the ladies. Come this way. Carapeggio Adonis. Mythology's the strongest man and the greatest lover. He had to be. He was the boyfriend of Venus. <laughs> <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, follow me upstairs, and we will visit with the great works of the Renaissance. <laughs> this is where we came in. Let's split. Oh, aren't they adorable? I like your kind of doll better. I think she's cute, too. Tell me I didn't hear anything. <laughs> Mother! Where? Where? Now that's what I call bad casting. Your mother as a doll. Mother, what are you doing in Rome? What are you doing in Rome? I thought you were staying at Pisa. Well, we, we are. We have a lovely villa. But Darren had a business appointment this afternoon, so we thought we'd do a little sightseeing. Oh. And what's more important, who's home minding the children? Esmeralda is covering for me, and Tabitha wanted spaghetti for lunch. Well, why didn't you go to the market like anybody else? <laughs> I'm not like anybody else, nor are my grandchildren. When they want Italian spaghetti, they get Italian spaghetti. <laughs> but, Mother, you promised. Speaking of promises.
promises. I almost forgot. <laughs> I, I made a promise to the children that I would kiss their mama and their papa for them. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, half a promise is better than none. I appreciate that, Andorra. I have a business luncheon and I don't want to lose my appetite. <laughs> I better get going. See you back at the villa, honey. Ciao. And it's always a pleasure to say goodbye to you, Andorra. <laughs> Big eyes he has. <laughs> Mother, what's the real reason you're in Rome? That's the reason. A mortal creature like Durwood, transplanted from his quarter acre of suburban crabgrass to this romantic Roman <laughs> carnival, can go bananas. <laughs> and I don't want my little girl to get hurt. Oh, well, I appreciate the concern, Mamma Mia. It's been nice chatting with you. But we're having guests for the weekend, so I have to do the marketing. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Oh, you poor, trusting child. When will you ever learn that Mother knows best? <laughs> and what Mother knows best? is how to prove she's right. <laughs> the Arc de Triomphe. You know, we ought to send the kids some picture postcards at the sites. Good idea. Dear Tabitha and Adam. So, yeah. What are you doing? Just what you suggested, sending some postcards. I prefer you use the regular mail. When you're a witch, that is the regular mail. It's a big doggy, isn't it? It's a big doggy. Yeah, that's right. Oh. oh, how nice. Postcards from your mama. Come on. Dear Tabitha and Adam, we are now passing the Arc de Triomphe, which is at the other end of the Champs Elysees. You children have a very thoughtful mama. And here we are at Cleopatra's Needle. That's a big needle. What is it so? <laughs> this is the famous Louvre Museum. It was originally built almost 900 years ago. Imagine that. I don't have to imagine it. I was there when they laid the cornerstone. In front of the Louvre are the beautiful Luxembourg Gardens. We'll be going cross town where we'll show you pictures of the... <laughs> That sounds like a visit from your grandma. <laughs> Children, stay here and enjoy Mama's postcards. Now stay there. Boy, will I be glad to get home. The next time Larry offers you a vacation with a little business on the side, we'll know what he really means is a little vacation. But I do feel a little guilty about dumping the regal silverware account in Larry's lap. If it's in Larry's lap, what's it doing in your mind? And... And that's probably Larry. Oh, he doesn't have the nerve. Or does he? <laughs> he does. Look what just flew in. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, fellow travelers, have I got terrific news for you. We're all going to spend the weekend with nobility, as guests of the Duke of Whitsett at his castle. Uh, Larry, you, you must be joking. Yesterday, we agreed that Sam and I would fly home this afternoon, and you would stay over to handle a regal silverware account. Well, that was yesterday. We can't keep living in the past. <laughs> Besides, we've just arrived. Oh, but Larry, if their plans are all set... Uh, Louise, just stay out of this. You don't get an invitation to a castle every day in the week, you know. But we're all packed and ready to go. Just hear me out. Then you can tell me what you think. We'll spend a nice, quiet, restful weekend with the Duke. Then on Monday, you and I can meet with Regal Silverware. But we won't be here Monday. Of course you will, if you spend the weekend at the castle. <laughs> Do you get the logic? No. 
But I get the idea. Apparently, we're going to spend the weekend at the castle. <laughs> wow, we kids. Wasn't that a funny cartoon? I bet you never thought it was going to end, did you? Neither did I. Okay, time for lunch. They have a choice. What'll it be? Peanut butter and jelly or egg salad sandwiches? Shh, Molly, we're watching Steamboat Bill. Well, I'm sure that Steamboat Bill approves of lunch. Now, what'll it be? Mommy, please, you said we could watch Daddy's new show. Well, sweetheart, it isn't really Daddy's show. He just does the advertising. Okay, kids, it's time for our daily boxing lesson. You guessed it, Punch and Judy. Suck it to her, Punch. Hi, everybody. My name is Mr. Punch, and this is the Punch and Judy Show. <laughs> First, I'll start things out by calling up my wife, Judy. <laughs> hey, Judy, come on up. I can't. Why not? Because I'm busy, busy, busy. You better come up or you're going to be sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> well, what do you want? I want a kiss. No. All right, then try one of mine. Ow! Do you like it? No. Try another. <laughs> You'll acquire a taste for them. Mommy, how come Punch always hits Judy? <laughs> because she isn't a member of Women's Live. What, Mommy? <laughs> Never mind, sweetheart. No, uh, Punch is just very aggressive. Which doesn't seem to bother your brother one bit. No, no, now, what do you have for lunch? How about a TV lunch? Okay. Two TV peanut butter and jelly specials coming up. No! Boy, you're persistent, aren't you? You're also a glutton for punishment. Take another and another and another. Now, it's up to uh, me. How's our latest contribution well, to the not? humor and culture of our youth? Not only have I not laughed, I... chuckled, or smiled, but I'm actually in pain. Let me remind you, you're not a five-year-old. Like but you are the account executive, so keep watching. The sponsor might ask questions. I'm gonna have a sore head tomorrow, I can tell that. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awful the way you're not hitting her. Oh, you better look out. Oh, yeah? We'll make another and another and another. You're hey, learning you real like bad things apples? from this show. Those are not apples, those are looks. Okay, someone has to put a stop yeah, to all this hitting, oh, and it yeah. might as well be me. Judy, oh, we'll oh. go get my supper. No! And another. Punch, my mommy says you're very aggressive. And because of you, my brother keeps on hitting me. Tabitha! Right that girl, where'd that, where'd that kid come from? I don't know. I never saw her before. Oh, look. Ow, ow, ow! Stop that hitting. Yeah, where did the kid come from? How do I know? Maybe they added something without telling us. Well, maybe the director's back on the funny water. All you know how to do, Punch, is hit. But this... It, Wait till I tell my analyst about this. Oh, come on, little girl. Don't be a spoil sport. I ain't hitting her hard. Besides, you like Sam! I sure do. Ow, ow, ow! Adam, Judy only said that because she's scared of Punch. But Judy, you don't have to be scared of Punch anymore. Whoops. Where's my flapper? Judy, have you seen my flapper? No, but I'll go get another one. My goodness. Thank you very much. There. Now, doesn't that feel better? No! Hello? Oh, hi, sweetheart. Sam, may I ask what you're doing? Of course you may. May I ask why you ask? Because your daughter is on television. What? She just popped into the Steamboat Bill show. You're kidding. Flowers rise. I said flowers rise. Flowers, won't you please rise? Is this some sort of a charade? Oh, mother, am I glad to see you. No, it isn't a charade, and you are looking at one sick witch. What's happened? I've lost my powers. Great Haley's Comet. I'll call Dr. Bombay right away. Oh, don't bother. He's been here and gone. Well, how could you get in touch with him without your witchcraft? Well, Esmeralda was babysitting for me, and, and she contacted him. What did Bombay say was wrong? Nothing. Samantha! Well, Mother, it, it's very difficult to talk about. 
Dr. Bombay gave me a complete checkup with his computerized hexometer and couldn't find a single solitary thing wrong with me. Then how does he explain the loss of your powers? Well, uh, Dr. Bombay seems to think that... He seems to think that it's a manifestation of molecular mortal linkage caused by a formation of polymers and certain hydrogen elements in, in a biological unity of two or more dominant species. Would you like me to repeat that? No. <laughs> I got it. Mother, promise you'll try to control yourself. Yes, yes, I will. It's the result of your mortal marriage. You got it all right. <laughs> Mother! Mother! You promised to control yourself. I did. If I didn't, this house would be in El Paso. <laughs> Have you told Durwood? He merely pointed out that millions of, of people get, get along very well without witchcraft. And, well, maybe he's right. Maybe I can adjust. Maybe you could. And I might even learn to live with the disgrace. But your father's another story. When he finds out, I wouldn't give two kopecks for Durwood's continued existence. <laughs> and he's bound to find out sooner or later. <laughs> Correction. He's going to find out sooner. Deep in the forest, the woodcutter built a fire. You stay here and rest, the stepmother said to the children, and when we're ready, we'll come and fetch you. So Hansel and Gretel sat by the fire, and when lunchtime came, they had nothing to eat. Do you know what was going through Hansel and Gretel's mind? Do you? No. Well, they were thinking, boy, some kids sure are lucky. Some kids have stew with potatoes and milk and chocolate cake for dinner and leave half of it on their plates. <laughs> now, where were we? Let's see. Oh, here we are. Rawr! What was that growling noise, asked Gretel, clutching Hansel in fright. Honey, the tape should be here any minute. And I think your cheese puffs are burning. Uh-oh. Continued, same time tomorrow. What was that growling noise, Mommy? Sweetheart, you're old enough to finish reading the story to Adam. Growl! What was that growling noise, asked Gretel? Bear? Bang? Hansel's tummy. It was growling from hunger, see? Aren't they sad? I bet I could cheer them up. Yeah. Don't be scared, it's only me. Who are you? Tabitha, and this is my brother Adam. We want to cheer you up. I'm Hansel, and this is my sister Gretel. <laughs> are you really hungry? We haven't had anything to eat since last night's supper. That's terrible. I'm going to get you something to eat. <laughs> you do that? Like this. It only works for witches. Witches are only in stories. I'm a witch. You couldn't be. Witches are mean, ugly old hags. I'm a good witch, and I'll prove it to you by getting you something to eat. Just toast, honey. Things are really piling up at the office. We have a chance of closing on the Monticello carpet account. <laughs> Why, Durwood, I didn't know you cared. Mother. And Dora, would you kindly give us some warning when you're coming by sending something ahead of you that's not so frightening? Like a dragon? Darren, I'll send a fire-breathing one, and we'll find out how inflammable you are. Mother! And Dora... I am officially informing you that you are trespassing here. Darren! I think I'm in a rut. Have you told him? Of course not.
Because I'm not going. Uh, not going where? My cousin Panda's getting married. It would be a disgrace if Samantha missed the wedding. They were very close as children. Well, maybe we could make it. When is it? Next weekend, in Hong Kong. <laughs> it's out of the question. Andorra. Mother, that's not funny. He treats you like a prisoner, you might as well look like one. I am not a prisoner in this house. Except when you show up. The point is, Endora, I would want Sam to go to the wedding, but we just got back from Europe. And work is piling up at the office, and I just cannot get away at this time. I will send my apologies to Panda. I'm sure she'll understand. You actually mean you're going to let Derwood's silly job keep you from... You bet your sweet broomstick. Oh, how quaint. Mother, would you mind springing me? Of course not, dear. Thanks a lot. I'll see you at the wedding, my darling. What did she mean by that? I, uh, I think I'd rather not think about it. I'm sure I left them in my briefcase. Sam, did you? No, I didn't. But I did. Sam, since when did your mother get the idea that our marriage license was her deed to my briefcase? Is it wrong for a mother to try to protect her little girl? Mother, that's what I love about your little visits. You always bring a ray of sunshine into an otherwise drab existence. You're half right. It certainly is a drab existence. Sam, I think I'll skip breakfast. <coughs> Dora, hmm. it's always a pleasure to say goodbye to you. Mother, now that you have invaded our privacy, would you like to babysit tonight? Oh. Darren and I are celebrating the anniversary of our first date. Must you rub it in? <laughs> Don't you care if Derwood's briefcase contains a gaggle of centiphones? Oh, Mother. In advertising, beautiful girls are merely tools of the trade. How oh, can a witch of mine be so naive? Oh, mother. What? Models like that are just routine. Have you ever heard a syndrome peculiar to mortal men? The seven-year itch? Seven years marriage and it's off with the old and on with the new. In case you hadn't noticed, Darren and I have been married for eight years. You see, Derwood can't do anything right. <laughs> he can do everything right. I ought to know. Lady, thou doth protest too much, methinks. Mother, thou doth butt in too much, methinks. <laughs> Are you going to babysit with the kids tonight or not? Of course, darling. I'll be back in plenty of time. Sweetheart? Hmm? What time's your lunch meeting? At one o'clock. Hey, I better get going. Hello? Oh, hi. Oh, really? Well, that's wonderful. Yeah, I'll certainly tell him. Bye-bye. Tell who about what? You. About something I don't think you're going to be too happy about. You remember the tip on those two horses in the Daily Double that Abner Kravitz gave you yesterday? Uh, don't tell me they won. Okay, I won't tell you. Uh-oh. What did the double pay? A bundle. And he bought Mrs. Kravitz a diamond ring with his winnings. Naturally, she couldn't wait to tell me about it. 
Derwood is afraid to take a chance. And maybe he'd win a bundle and get you a diamond ring. And Dora, must you always invade our house without warning? Of course not. Watch out! <laughs> Goodbye, Andorra. <laughs> Mother, hmm. in answer to your question, I already have a diamond ring. Oh, really? Then why don't you wear it? I am wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's the little fella. Mother, you are not at your best when you try humor. You said, Martha, I was just trying to make a point. Derwood is entirely too cautious. It's no wonder he stays on his dreary little treadmill. He'll never get anywhere unless he's willing to take a chance. Mother, I am not going to argue with you. For two reasons. First of all, it's useless. Second of all, I have a lot to do, and the children are upstairs if you want to say hello. French toast, Daddy. Before you answer, guess who made it? Teresa made it. Who asked you to turn? <laughs> it's very good. Now, I didn't even know you could speak French. <laughs> <laughs> what time's your golf date? Well, no special time. Well, Larry's in Chicago, so our regular foursome isn't playing today. I have an idea. Why don't you stay home and spend the day with this foursome? Well, I might just do that. All right, Mommy. Oh, how about that? He wants to drink to your staying home. <laughs> Sabbath, it's delicious. Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> Emergency. <laughs> You get the milk. <laughs> Got to put peanut butter on the shopping list. <laughs> yes, mother. What is Derwood doing here? If you're referring to Darren, he lives here. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, don't be impertinent. It was you who suggested that the testing committee come on a Saturday because that's when it plays golf. But this is the wrong Saturday. He isn't playing today. Samantha's chairman of the committee. I can't keep stalling the other members. Mother, don't put your foot on that tomato. You'll give it a soft spot, and they're sky high these days. Oh, and now you're trying to stall me. The witches' council has already asked me why you're so rich to have Adam Power show. Well, well, if you put it off another time, you might as well come right out and admit that so far he hasn't shown the least talent for witchcraft. But he's just a baby. Oh, Samantha, why pretend with me? At his age, Capitol was doing all manner of witchcraft. Now, you get rid of Durwood. I'm not sure I can. You'd better try. You're aware that your father is going to be here for the test. Uh -huh. I think I'll try and get Dur uh, Darren out of the house. Here, Mother. Have an apple. It'll keep the witch doctor away. <laughs> Not too dressy. <laughs> Sam, will you stop kidding around? We don't want to be late. Well, we have plenty of time. Oh, wait a minute. Let me help you with those. These business dinners are a pain anyway. Why do you do it? You know, it's all part of Larry's selling concept. Wine, dine, and sign. <laughs> 
You who? Esmeralda. Oh, Mr. Stevens, you don't have any pants on. In the privacy of my bedroom, I don't see anything wrong with that. If I had any privacy. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll just pop down to the kitchen and fix myself some scrambled eggs. Eggs. <laughs> Sam, what is she doing here? She told you. Her flaps were flipping when they should have been flapping. I don't mean in the bedroom. I mean here. Help! 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 Don't tell me that's... Well, it isn't Santa Claus. Good morning. Good morning, sweetheart. Mm. Who are the kids? Uh, Esmeralda took them to the park for the day. Sam, you have finally achieved the ultimate in housewifery. I've fixed scrambled eggs before. No, no, no. I mean volunteering for Mrs. Prescott's charity bazaar and fashion show. Oh, that. Yeah, getting next to the client's wife is very important in the business world. I know. I just hope I have enough energy to make it. I have an acute case of the blahs. You're not trying to back out, are you? Well, the power of positive thinking. <sighs> I feel wonderful. In fact, I have never felt better. Oh, dear. Oh. Slow and steady wins the race. Sam, if you're not kidding, say so. So? What's wrong? I, I don't know. I, I felt it coming on last night. It's as if I can't move my legs or, or my arms, and it's getting worse. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. See what I mean? Well, maybe you better lie down in the living room for a while. Oh, good idea. Uh, how, how, how about if, if you brought, brought the couch in here? Uh, uh, well, uh, here, I'll, I'll carry you in. Oh, now, sweetheart, be careful. I don't want you to hurt yourself. Damn! You feel like you weigh a ton. I don't know. But I, I think I better call Dr. Bombay for some help. The trouble is, every time Dr. Bombay helps us, we end up needing more help. <laughs> help! Dr. Bombay, help! Hello? Oh, hi, Larry. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's ready. You want to talk to him? You're kidding. Yeah, sure, I'll tell him. Bye-bye. That was Larry. He and Mr. Wolcott will be over to pick you up in a few minutes, and guess what? What? In Mr. Wolcott's helicopter. You're kidding. That's what I said. Oh, I guess if you're stuck with being one of the ten richest men in the world, you might as well live like it. <laughs> Where are you going? He wants to show us the site of the newest in the chain of Wolcott Towers. There's a chance we may be handling the advertising for all his hotels. Wow. I said they'd be right over, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Serena! Hi, cuz. Serena, since when do you use a doorbell? Or, for that matter, a door? <laughs> since when is it good manners not to say hello? Since... <laughs> hello, Serena. And what are you doing here? <laughs> when you're exiled, you have to go someplace. What do you mean, exile? Oh, I forgot. I told the cab driver you'd pay the fare, Sammy. Cab, cab driver? driver? That's right. Uh, sweetheart, why don't you pay the cab driver and I'll find out what's going on? Come on, Serena. What do you mean, exile? Contessa Piranha blew her cool. Uh-oh. Yeah. How was I supposed to know that Otto was her fiancé? What did Piranha do? The old bat took me by surprise and zapped away all my powers. 
How'd you get here? She zapped me onto the freeway. It was humiliating and suffocating. How can you stand all that smog? Serena, why don't you settle in Switzerland? They don't have a smog problem. Darren, this is serious. Serena's lost her powers. You bet it's serious. She can't stay here. Sweetheart, where is your compassion? Uh, we can't throw her out. I mean, if she's without her power, she's going to need some more of her basic training. Then let's ship her off to Fort Bragg. <laughs> Sam, powers or no powers, if she stays here, we're living in a potential disaster area. Oh, th that must be Larry and, and Mr. Wolcott. Sam, any place but here. much difference between witchcraft and richcraft. <laughs> Except maybe you fly a little slower. <laughs> Needs more salt. salt of the earth, but I wish you wouldn't do that. I can season my stew without your help. Well, I was just trying to make things easier. No point in working yourself into a stew. Stew? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Samantha, you've lost your sense of humor. I am all. And I'm not surprised living with that drudge. <laughs> Sam. What a wonderful surprise. Your mother's here. And I might have a surprise for you. How would you like to be a carrot growing in a field of rabbits? <laughs> hi, Mommy. Hi, Daddy. Well, hi, Grandma. Guess what? We give up. I'm invited to a party. Terrific. Who's? Janice Lenton. She lives down the street. Her birthday's a week from Saturday, and I'm invited to go ice skating with a bunch of other girls. Uh, now, just calm down, Tabitha. There's one thing you've forgotten. What's that? You don't know how to ice skate. Tabitha can't ice skate. Uh, honey, why why don't you get cleaned up for dinner, and uh, Daddy and I'll talk about it, okay? Okay. Bad dog. It's disgraceful that Tabitha can't ice skate. Well, I remember when you took your first lesson. You were three years old. It was a morning lesson, and that same afternoon, you qualified for the cosmic ice capade. <laughs> and she learned by witchcraft. How terribly clever of you to figure that out. Well, Tabitha is going to learn to skate the mortal way. Oh, I, I haven't skated since then, so I'm probably a little rusty, but uh, if you would like me to, uh, I will personally teach Tabitha. I wouldn't like you to. <laughs> if anyone's going to teach my child how to ice skate, it'll be a mortal instructor on a mortal skating rink the mortal way. You're in a mortal rut. <laughs> Prospect of my granddaughter floundering on the ice with with them has given me a splitting migraine. And now that you've made a perfectly marvelous person sick, she's leaving. Sam, when you take Tabitha for her lesson, I want to promise. Uh, during the lesson, neither student will use witchcraft. Well, of course not. We want Tabitha to. 
do you mean, neither, student? Uh, can you learn to skate normally? From scratch, with, without witchcraft? Why would I want to do that? <laughs> Could you or couldn't you? Darren, why is it you think that witches need witchcraft for everything? Not everything, just everything difficult. <laughs> Can you learn to skate the mortal way? Are you challenging me? Yes. I accept. And if I can't, I will be more careful in the future about accepting challenges. Hey, Paris, it's Seal Bouffle, and Germany, it's bitter. Please, Serena, come this way. I need a babysitter. <laughs> ha! Do I look like Mary Puppins to you? Well, I'll admit it's casting against type. But Esmeralda's not available, and I have a charity luncheon to go to. And you'd be doing me a big favor. Charity luncheon? Do you realize that the French fleet at Saint-Tropez was about to crown me Miss Naval? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Serena, but your trophy room is overflowing as it is. I'm late. Please be good. I haven't much choice. I have to go. I'll be back in a couple of hours. Right on. Blech. <laughs> Anything I can do for you? Uh, no, 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 no. I just came by to uh, return Darren's body. <laughs> I mean, he's putter. <laughs> well, I'll just leave it here and be on my way. Do you know that your far out baby blue eyes kind of turned me on? Serena, you certainly know how to flatter the senior citizens. Oh, Daddy Bear. <laughs> Did I ever tell you that I am simply wild about gray hair? No, as a matter of fact, you are? Well, I've earned every one of them. <laughs> oh, and I love your sense of humor. <laughs> so, why don't you stick around and we'll break out a bottle of the bubbly and, and drink and dance and potter around? <laughs> Watch it, Serena. You're going to turn the old gray fox into the red devil of yesteryear. And I could do it, too. I believe it. No. I mean, really. <laughs> Sam, the doorbell. Suppose I do when you're not home to sound the alarm. <laughs> Mrs. Stevens? Yes? My name is Maud Hickman. I'm with the Board of Education. Oh. Uh, come in. Thank you. Our sweet sweetheart? Uh, this is Mr. Stevens. This is Mrs. Hickman. She's with the Board of Education. Oh. It has come to our attention that you have a child of school age who is not enrolled in school. It, it's true. Tabitha isn't in school, but I've been tutoring her at home. I see. And what are your qualifications? Do you have a teaching certificate? No. But I have a birth certificate at Tabitha's. It says that I'm her mother. And I think those are pretty good qualifications. But you have no formal training. As a mother? You can make jokes if you like. 
But this is a serious matter. You're in violation of the law, you know. It's just that our little girl is unique. She's not your run-of-the-mill child. She has special talents, and we... I did not come here to debate with you, Mrs. Stevens. Your child must be registered in school at once. If she is not, a court order will be issued directing you to do so. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. Good day. Mrs. Hickman. Yes? I'd like to ask you something. No? How did you find out Tabitha wasn't in school? We have our ways. Is one of them spying? I would say that getting the child out of this house for most of the day is probably the best thing that could happen to her. <laughs> Sam, are you out of your tree? Oh, I'm sorry, but she made me furious and I had to get it off my chest. Terrific. Now, will you kindly get it off her? Okay, okay. <laughs> and now that the hijinks are over, what are we going to do about this? I have a simple solution. No? Well, what's that? We don't have any other choice. I will enroll Tabitha in school today. Well, is Tabitha ready for school? Of course she's ready for school. The question is, is school ready for Tabitha? <laughs> They're beautiful, Mommy. Yes, they are, aren't they, sweetheart? Look at this. Now, this is a button from George Washington's coat, just like that one. Why did it fall off? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Mrs. Washington didn't sew too well. Now, look at this. This is a buckle from his shoe, see? Which would be better to take to school? The buckle from George Washington's shoe or the button from his coat? I think you better leave them both here. They're much too valuable. But next Monday's Washington's birthday, and today we're having show and tell. Well, you could show the book and tell the class that your daddy collects Washington relics. I guess so. You finish getting ready for school. I'll get daddy's breakfast. OK, Mommy. School days, school days, all those golden fool days. Who were they, Esmeralda? Not me, honey. I was a fool in school. <laughs> oh, George Washington. I sure wish I could take the real buckle and button to school for show and tell instead of this picture. Everybody else would probably bring pictures. And we don't want to be like everybody else, do we? I tell you what, if you promise to return them right after school, I'll get you the buckle and the button. But Mommy said I couldn't take Daddy's collection. Oh, we won't touch your Daddy's collection. I'll zap them out of the book. Then this afternoon after school, I'll zap them right back again. Oh, would you? <laughs> well, I may not be much of a witch, but I can positively do that, I think. <laughs> now, now give me a little room. Find the rhyme that goes with buckle. Tuckle, wuckle, duckle, chuckle. Come on, George, and look alive. I begin to weary of this jive. <laughs> Anything happening? A whole lot. <laughs> oh! Am I mad? Oh, well, you have every right to be, Mr. President. I, I just... Wanted your buckle and button. Buckle and button. But this is even better. This is delayed battle fatigue from Valley Forge. <laughs> if I'm having hallucinations, I, I, I think I should have them uh, sitting down. Oh, yes. <laughs> Which would be better to take to school? The buckle from George Washington's shoe or the button from his coat? I think you better leave them both here. They're much too valuable. A simple request, a simple refusal. That should have been the end of it. But Esmeralda was babysitting, the sometime maid and the all-time goof-up. If Tabitha couldn't have the real buckle and button, Esmeralda would zap them out of the book. Instead, she got the whole picture. 
Get the picture? <laughs> Samantha and Darren were kept busy entertaining their distinguished visitor. But the father of his country was getting restless. So when Samantha's back was turned, he decided to inspect the state of the neighborhood and got himself involved in listening and making political speeches. By the time Samantha had caught up with him, the father of our country was being arrested for disturbing the peace. Bail was posted and George was returned to Darren's custody to await a court hearing. And Esmeralda finally remembered the incantation to send George Washington back where he came from. Did she succeed? You bet your boots she did. O or rather shoes, Washington shoes, which got left behind. What's a general without his shoes, right? So Esmeralda tried to return them to the general. She goofed, and guess what returned instead? Right, the general. Who is the lady? That's no lady. That's his wife. Hi, sweetheart. I'm taking orders for breakfast. Waffles, pancakes, eggs. Oh, just coffee for me. I've got that breakfast meeting with Larry. You know, I've got to get going myself. I'm taking Tabitha to school half an hour early today. Oh, yeah. Today's the big day. Is Tabitha nervous? Darren, this isn't a test to see if she can get into Harvard. It's just a test to see if she can skip to the second grade. Bonjour, no. It's not so bone anymore. It could get worse. How could it get worse? You're already here. Uh, is this going to take long? No. All I want to know is, what is this I hear about school? Mother, it's not polite to eavesdrop. I was not eavesdropping. You mean the house is bugged? Samantha, tell Derweed he's living dangerously when he uses the word bug. It's giving me ideas. Mother says you're... I heard. I heard. Now, what's this about school? Simple. Tabitha started school. Where? Towner's Elementary. A mortal school? What's wrong with a mortal school? I went to one. You've just answered your own question. <laughs> Samantha, I'm violently opposed to it. As a grandmother, you are certainly entitled to your opinion. And as a mother, I am entitled to ignore it. How can you deprive Tabitha of the superior training that only a proper witch's finishing school can give her? Mother, knock it off. Oh, very well. I know when I'm not wanted. Since when? <laughs> oh. Hi, Grandmama. Hi, Grandmama. Is that the best you can do after I've come halfway around the world for one of your smiles? <gasps> Not that kind of smile. It's the best I can do, Grandmama. What's wrong, my precious? School. I have to take a test. They want to see if I'm smart enough to go into the second grade. Of course you're smart enough. Do you doubt it? I don't know. I never took a test before. You listen to your grandmama. You are going to pass magna cum laude. Give her knowledge, O ye muses. All the knowledge that she chooses. Aristotle, Shakespeare, Plato, all the languages in NATO. Science back to Galileo. Medicine from the Brothers Mayo. You'll know it all from A to Z. Awake now, my little chickadee. It's time for school, sweetheart. Coming, Mother. You coming, Grandma? No. I think I'd better be going. <laughs> Close, but it just misses. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. What time did you get up? Mm, early. It seemed like 10 minutes after I went to sleep. So I decided to take another run on the campaign for the Benson mattress account. Well, you look exhausted. 
Is working this hard worth it? Larry's promised me a healthy bonus if I land this account. And we're gonna spend a carefree week in Bermuda. Well, that's terrific. If I land this account, something I haven't done much of lately. Well, you'll think of something. I know you will. Let's see what you got. You'll stop counting sheep on a Benson Sleep Easy mattress. You'll sleep like a king on a Benson Sleep Easy mattress. You'll sleep tight as a drum on a Benson... Well, what's wrong with these ideas? They're ordinary. They need some kind of jazzing up. They need... I don't know what they need. Well, let's see. Uh, what if you had uh, one sheep instead of five? Then, uh, let's see, one sheep is all you have time to count on a Benson Sleep Easy mattress. Not bad. Not bad at all. And in this one, you could have a younger version of the man that's asleep bounding out of bed with a prince's crown, and it could read, you'll sleep like a king and awake like a prince. Yeah. Now, this one, here's the drum, let's see. Over here, you could put a fiddle with the notes coming out. You'll sleep tight as a drum and awake, fit as a fiddle. Sam, that's great. I, I knew I was close, but you zeroed right in on it. Uh, hold it. Sam, you didn't... Didn't what? Well, it's very sweet and generous of you, but I don't want that kind of help. Darren, there was no witchcraft involved in my ideas. Then what do you call it? I call it using my brain. I do have one, you know. <laughs> well, honey, I understand. It's only normal for you to want me to succeed and... Darren, if you keep this up, we're only going to succeed in having a fight. Well, I don't want to have a fight. So I better be getting to the office. Besides, I have to get these rushed to the art department if I want to make that one o'clock meeting with Larry and Benson. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbo's ego's a bit bruised, eh? Mother, this is one time I can do without your eavesdropping. <laughs> Beep chow. I hear that's more. Oh, Mr. Fong. I'm honored to have you in my humble place, Mr. Stephen. And uh, oh, my wife, Samantha. How do you do? How do you do? Please sit down. Thank you. Now, I'm certainly looking forward to the prospect of handling your advertising. Yes, let's hope we can bring that about. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Tate should be here any minute. Good. In the meantime, I have a surprise. This is my masterpiece. And I would like you both to try it with my compliment. Well, and now we're honored. Please. Thank you. Mmm. That's marvelous. What in the world is in it? Sorry, the ingredients are secret. All but one. The Himalayan cinnamon stick is very rare from a remote area high in the mountains. I have named my drink after the stick, a heavenly Himalayan. Night after night, I stayed here after closing, trying this formula and that, like a witch over a cauldron. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly came up with a bewitching drink. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's uh, heavenly, all right. And heady, too, you might say. <gasps> Sam, are you all right? Uh, uh, I, I feel a little strange. <laughs> the truth is, I feel a lot strange. Strange? Dizzy. Perhaps Madame would like to lie down in the office. Uh, no. No, I think we better leave. <laughs> oh, uh, I am definitely not well. Uh, the Himalayan <laughs> cocktail is really very mild. Uh, it's never affected any of my customer like that before. Well, Sam's not like any of your other customers, Mr. Fawn. Cauldron, 
cauldron, tell me true how you stirred up such a witch's brew. We do have to go home. Yes, yes, and the better the sooner. <laughs> Would you make our excuses to Mr. and Mrs. Tate? Yes. <laughs> Stevens, what's wrong? Oh, I, I wish I knew. Where am I? You're home. Samantha, what's wrong? <laughs> Who's she? It's your Aunt Hagatha. Oh, so it is. What's she doing here? Well, she's sitting for us. <laughs> no, she's not. She's standing for us. <laughs> Steven, she's sick. Oh, I don't understand it. <laughs> she just had a couple of sips oh. of a drink and got looped. That's impossible. Witches aren't subject to such mortal frailties. Something is radically wrong. Samantha, should I get in touch with Dr. Bombay? That quack? Absolutely not. Samantha, is he always this difficult? Relax, sweetheart. We may not need Dr. Bombay after all. I'm beginning to feel better. At least I'm not dizzy anymore. Do you mind if I try out my witchcraft? Whether he minds or not doesn't matter. The only thing I mind is her. Well, let's see. Uh, lamp, lamp on yonder table, fly to me if you are able. <laughs> well, now shall I call Dr. Bombay, or are you still in your mortal snit? Sam! Great Hector's ghost! Now what? Look! Don't just stand there. Get Dr. Bombay. <gasps> oh! And I bet you thought you'd grown accustomed to my face. <laughs> I thought you were going to sleep late this morning. Yeah, but I find it hard to sleep in a half-empty bed. Oh, well, I had these pots on my mind. Oh, I must look a mess. Yeah, but what a beautiful mess. Let's see now. There's a nice clean spot. <laughs> uh, let me wash up. I'll fix you some breakfast. I haven't got time for breakfast. I have an 11 o'clock appointment, and then I have to stop off and pick up a special surprise I found for you. What's the occasion? It's an everyday occasion. I love you. Stop! I'm getting nauseous. <laughs> up here, my darling. And Dora, must you show up without any warning, like the flu? Derwood, you are very ignorable. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> my, oh. <laughs> oh, sweetheart. Don't forget that Larry and the Franklins are coming over for dinner tonight. No, no. I'll be home early. I still say you're a beautiful mess. <laughs> yeah. Only in this place could supply a delicatessen for a year. Father, if you don't like it, why don't you go someplace where the eavesdropping is better? The way you lap up that syrup, my darling, it's pathetic. Why shouldn't I? Because he's a mortal. And because when your average mortal starts bringing home presents to his wife, and there's no occasion, believe me, there's been an occasion. You have a very suspicious mind. Oh, your naivete is sick-making. Or are you living on fabrications just as they do? No, I'm not. Darren is not your average mortal. He doesn't tell lies. Nonsense. They're all the same, every one of them, including your precious Durwood. Why, I wager. Yes? I just remembered something urgent I have to do. I won't be long. Oh, well, take your time. <laughs> Love is blind. <laughs> 